Hello, my name is Michelle Sudbury and I'm the STEM coordinator at the Texas Education Agency. I'm excited to release the instructional series on the STEM toolkit. The STEM toolkit was designed to help districts or campus design and implement a district-wide or campus-wide STEM program. This video series will consist of five videos that will go through the tools step-by-step. -step. This is the introductory video for the STEM toolkit series. The objective for this video is to empower leaders with information to help guide and support STEM decisions. Participants are gonna be able to define the indicators of high quality STEM education as they relate to TEA STEM framework, communicate the purpose of the STEM resources within the STEM toolkit, examine the four models of STEM implementation, considering current needs and priorities, and recognize the logistical considerations that are important in planning and implementing successful STEM programs. One of the first steps in developing STEM programming in Texas was to establish a common definition for STEM education. We have defined STEM education as a method of hands-on teaching and learning where students learn to apply academic content by creatively solving real world problems with innovative design-based thinking to prepare students for future career opportunities. When we talk about STEM throughout this series, we are talking about a method of instruction, not a course or a program. Before looking at the toolkit, it is important to look at the STEM framework. The framework was developed in 2019 to guide districts as they begin to explore STEM education locally. The framework consists of five main components, the theory of action, STEM objectives, STEM model progression, the six domains of STEM, and the STEM high quality indicators. Our theory of action is what drives the STEM work we are doing in Texas. The theory of action is if we provide guidelines and expectations about what high quality STEM looks like, and we create tools, engagement resources, and supports to help schools ensure students are prepared for STEM pathways, and we increase our engagement and communication with local, state, and national stakeholders, then we will increase the number of population of students that are prepared for success in STEM pathways. And we will deliver a large pool of skilled talent to the future Texas workforce. The first part of the theory of action states, if we provide guidelines and expectations about what high quality STEM looks like, page three of the STEM framework provides the six domains and high quality indicators of STEM education. The next part of this statement is we create tools, engagement resources, and supports to help schools ensure students are prepared for STEM pathways. The STEM toolkit provides resources and tools to build programming and to engage with stakeholders. And then our K-12 STEM statewide educator and leadership professional development supports districts with implementation. The final step of the theory of action is we increase our engagement and communication with local, state, and national stakeholders. This work is being carried out through our Texas ecosystem. We believe if we do all of these things, then we will achieve uh, our uh, goals, which is to increase the number of population of students that we are preparing for STEM pathways, and then developing the larger pool of skilled talent for our Texas workforce. The second page of the STEM framework outlines the STEM models that make up the STEM model progression. This progression is designed from an entry level to the highest level of engagement. The exploratory model is the starting point. The STEM experiences are standalone events that are not aligned to the state standards or content. 
So for example, an elementary campus might offer a coding event in the fall and a science and engineering fair in the spring. These events are not tied specifically to content, but do promote STEM awareness. The introductory model is a developing stage of a systematic STEM program. STEM experiences are offered to some students on the campus through gifted and talented programs, clubs, or elective classes. They're sometimes anchored in a subject area, like an elective class or a science class, and they're sometimes aligned to state standards, uh, but not always. The partial immersion model is the intermediate level and where TEA would like to see districts set a goal for their campuses. This model regularly embeds STEM experiences into lesson cycles. So for example, if we take the 5E instructional model, embedding PBL, which is project-based learning or problem-based learning, it could be used throughout any step of the 5E cycle or the engineering design challenge might be included as the elaborate in a cycle. This will be covered in more detail in video three of the series. These STEM experiences are always anchored into content and aligned to the Texas standards. The full immersion model is the most advanced model and not practical for all school districts. These schools are usually standalone campuses within a district or even a T-STEM college career running a school model. Students experience content in an immersive way, not in silos. The standards are taught through PBLs or design challenges, not in isolation. And instruction is being presented in cross-curricular instruction. So by the end of the school year, all state standards are covered, but they are not presented in a traditional scope and sequence. The final page of the Texas STEM framework is the high quality indicators of STEM programming. The indicators are arranged in six domains, equity and programming, school culture and climate, program design, curricular aspects of a STEM program, and stakeholder engagement, and finally communication and marketing strategies. High quality indicators should be present in all STEM programs. The model identification guide provides examples of how each of the high quality indicators can align to the models within the STEM model progression. That's gonna be covered in more detail during the instructional series video two. To help guide districts in their STEM programming, the TEA has developed a STEM toolkit. The toolkit's divided into three sections and will be covered during the instructional series. Each one of these videos has been kept short as an overview to help users navigate the tools and resources more quickly and efficiently. Following each video, including this one, is a short survey to help us better serve you. Please take a moment to complete the six question survey. It's multiple choice, it's quick click survey designed to take about one to two minutes. If you've never used a QR code before, it's easy with your mobile device. Simply open your camera and then you will be prompted to click on the survey. Or of course you can use the bit.ly located on the screen. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in the following instructional video. Um, that follow this one.